Thank you. Well, good, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, of course, it's really a great pleasure to be uh, with all of you coming from uh, all parts of AGPAC. Um, I know that you are very busy business people, and the most precious part of thing you can give to us is your time. Uh, so I really would like to thank you that you took the time to join us uh, for the next coming two days. And I'm particularly delighted to invite you in AGPAC because you have to realize one thing, is that Schneider is by large an Asian company. If you believe, like I do, that a company is first and above all about people, 40% of the 150,000 employees of Schneider reside in AGPAC. So it's by far our largest region now in terms of number of employees. It's also, it has become, probably due to that reason, our largest region in terms of, of business. And this is the reason why uh, six years ago I decided to move to Hong Kong. Uh, so today, with a part of my leadership, uh, so today I can welcome you in my city. Okay, so welcome to Hong Kong. So if we can come back one, uh, one slide, please. One more. Yeah, that one. When I was preparing uh, this conference, uh, we came with the title Powering the Digital Economy. And, and actually, uh, when I look at the title, uh, it makes so much sense because Schneider is the leading powerhouse for power and energy management. Uh, we, in that field, are bigger than any other player in the world by a factor of at least two medium voltage, low voltage, secure power, all of these packages together with software connectivity to uh, enable a, complete, a completely communicating system. But looking at, and this is where we come from, but looking at this title, I was saying, well, I could have said digitizing the power economy. Uh, because when I look at what we do today, more and more of what we do is enabling the digital transformation of our customers in power management on automation for greater efficiency. So in a nutshell, what we do at Schneider is powering on digitizing with technologies, on accompanying you, our customers, and our partners on that journey to digitization. So what I'm gonna try to do in the time that I have with you is to set the global picture of what we are trying to accomplish here. And you've got a lot of Schneider people here that you're gonna be able to engage with in the next coming two days to go in the detail of what it means for your application, for your market, uh, for your activity on your business. Right, so let's move directly into, uh, into the subject. What we are trying to resolve here is the equation of efficiency. So if you look at the raw figures, in the next coming 20 plus years, the energy consumption in the world will increase by 50%. For a very simple reason, we are seven billion people on the planet, and two billion of us don't have the right access to energy. And we at Schneider, and we are not the only one, we believe that access to energy is a fundamental right for everyone on this planet. And when you look at Asia, it's even more our problem because there are many of those people who reside in Asia and who deserve that access to energy, which is the basis of progress. At the same time, we were the first generation to discover that we have a problem of climate change due to carbon emission. And guess what? 80% of the source of carbon emission is coming from energy generation. So if you put that together, you realize that if we want to solve that energy deadlock, that energy equation, we have to step up the efficiency of everything we do by a factor of three. And I'll tell you that we should be even more motivated to do that in Asia because 80% of the bad effects of climate disorder will eat new economies, of which most of them are in Asia. Speak about typhoon, hurricanes, floodings, droughts, sea rising. The first impact, 80% of it, is going into our economies. So when we look at that, we say, well, maybe it's not a very great picture, but the reality is that we are also the generation that design two technologies that converge together to offer a solution to this problem. 
to a solution to a much greater efficiency in everything we do. The first one, of course, and we're going to speak about it, is digitization. Digitization, which is enabled by the connectivity, pervasive connectivity everywhere, by the fact that we are all armed with mobile and smartphones, which are normal user interface with the rest of the world, cloud, which, which allows a fast, better, far better deployment of digitization uh, through our applications. On the other one is a movement of power generation to renewable, supported by storage, which open totally new doors to the way of generative energy. Just let's look a little bit at the detail of it. Internet, remember the episode one of the internet, and it is about connecting people to people. The episode two of the internet is about connecting people to machines, on machines to machines. We have connected roughly 3 billion people to the internet. In the next coming five years or three years, we are going to connect 3 more billion, 2.5. At the same time, we're going to be connecting close to 30 billion machines. And if you go to 2025, 50 billion machines. And that is the world that we describe as the world of the internet of things, which makes it possible to converge the world of information on the world of operation. On that Schneider, we've decided to champion the convergence of the equ efficiency equation, champion the convergence of energy, automation, and software to get a greater level of efficiency in process and in energy. That combines together to address problem of inefficiencies that are much bigger than we believe. McKenzie uh, made a study uh, recently together with um, um, IEA, the International Energy Agency, and they tell us that today, as of today, our buildings and infrastructure are still 80% inefficient in terms of energy utilization. And even, even industry, which has worked on its productivity and its automation for now many years, is still 60% inefficient. So what we, have, we are doing at Schneider is designing technologies that allow to address those inefficiencies embedded in infrastructure building on an industry. This first technological of evolution combines with another one, which is the revolution of decentralized generation. So remember how we used to generate energy, and there will still be a large place for that. This is now being complemented by the explosion of decentralized generation, empowered by the decrease of cost of renewable, divided by five in terms of cost over the past 10 years, coupled with the evolution of storage, cost divided by three in the past 10 years. And that creates fantastic opportunities or changes in the field of solar, energy storage, microgrids, smart grid, because utilities, grid operators are facing the challenge of keeping all the parts together in a world where generation has become scattered, volatile, and consumption can be modulated thanks to digitization. Comes in front of us a new revolution, which is transport electrification, the electric vehicle, that will introduce on one side more unpredictable loads, on, 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 the, on, on the grid, but at the same time, capacities of storage that we have to learn how to use. So that's the second one. And somewhere, digitization makes it possible to manage this new world of more distributed energy generation and consumption. And this distribution of power generation makes it possible to digitize, especially new economies where you don't have yet the grid available. So what do we see at Schneider as a summary? We see a world that's going to be more electric. I was speaking about energy consumption. Electric consumption will grow twice faster, which is good news for many companies in this room, and which is very good news for Schneider Electric. Okay. We see a world that's going to be massively more digitized, we see a world that's going to be more decentralized, and in consequence, a world that's going to be more decarbonized. 
And you know, we collectively as human beings are not always good to see the speed of transition, to anticipate the force of transitions. But what makes it more compelling and probably more likely to happen faster than slower is the fact that cost points on return on investment, on payback times, are getting seriously shorter. When you speak about a building and you try to make it energy efficiency with the traditional way, which is more the passive way of doing, well, the paybacks that you get by making a building smart and digitized are four times shorter than the ones you get with the traditional way of doing. On the baseline of savings that we can attack in a building, making it smart is minimum 30%. With digitization, we can cut the integration time together of a data center by 50%. This is just observing projects that we are doing together. On industry, it's going for up to 30% of more operational improvements from the place where we are going together. Not to mention that the ROI, the return on investment of things that you do in the field of Internet of Things, not me saying it, McKenzie saying it, should be twice faster than the one we see together. So those changes of return on investment and paybacks will catalyze a faster evolution than we think today. Now let's switch to Schneider. This is a global environment where we operate, right? What does Schneider there? Uh, we are a very simple company. We do technologies. We do technologies that we put at the disposition of our customers, our partners, our integrators, and developers to build solutions. There is one common thread in everything we do. All of our technologies make sure that life is on, everywhere, for everyone, and at every moment. And because we operate in more than 100 countries, of which some are energy poor, we know that life is on, when energy is on, when your world is energized, when it is efficient, when it is connected. And what we've been doing over the years is to make sure that your energy on your life would be safe, reliable, efficient, sustainable, and because we live in the 21st century, unconnected. So brief picture of Schneider, 25 billion euro of turnover, roughly 30 billion dollars of turnover. 5% of our turnover dedicated to R&D. R&D is, is a bloodline of our company. We are committed to R&D. On 150,000 people all over the world, of which 60,000 in, uh, in, in Asia. And now when you look at the world that I described, uh, I invite you to rewind 20 years ago. 20 years ago, personally, I was living in China, starting Schneider in China. Today, I'm proud to say that China has become our second largest business in the world. We have 25,000 people working for Schneider in China. But at that time, we are very few, and, and we are starting the operations. And I received, or I bought, my first internet connection, right? And at that time, what I did with the internet was to do in a digital manner what I used to do in a physical manner. So principally mail and reading the news on Yahoo. That was what I used it for. And 20 years ago, I would have never imagined how the internet could transform my life. I would have never imagined Google. I would have never imagined Facebook. I would never have imagined iPhoning repositioning my life on that small screen. I would never have imagined that my kids would be crazy about it. I would never have imagined Uberizing the world around me and that I would connect with uh, my stakeholders or people of my life through those kind of applications. Well, we are today in the Internet of Things, which is starting now, exactly where we were 20 years ago. 20 years ago, in the Internet of People. We are starting to connect objects, we are starting to connect machines, and we have no idea on how much we shall be able to innovate on that one. But now I've got a question for all of us in this room. We are not speaking about our personal life. We are speaking about mission-critical application construction and designs. 
which you are doing in your daily life. So every decision you make today in your projects, in the things you run, is for the next 10 years, speak about a machine, speak about a production line, or the next 50 years, speak about an infrastructure on a building, on even more. So when you design today, do you think that there is a space in the world of tomorrow, 5, 10, 20 years, in which plants, building, machines will not be connected? And personally, I don't think so. As much as we all realize that there are issues related to it around cybersecurity, around interdependency of systems, just realize how we all feel uncomfortable when we are remote from our own connectivity, from our own smartphone. Tomorrow is going to be the same thing when we get disconnected from our home, from our buildings, and from our facilities. So at Schneider, uh, we tried to foresee that a long time ago. And for those who've been in business with us for many years, you may remember 1997 that we launched Transparent Factory, which was for the first time applying the internet and the ethernet to manufacturing on the shop floor. And from that time on, Schneider developed everything based on internet. Ten years ago, and I know that many companies recently had a new vocation for the Internet of Things, but ten years ago, we launched EcoStructure. EcoStructure was designing an Internet-based architecture for all the major markets that we serve at Schneider. And EcoStructure has grown and developed into what it is today and what you see here today. Three layers, connected products, and at this level, at Schneider, what we want is you to be able to access all the characteristics of the products you have in your installation, Would it be for power management and for automation. We have also a very strong guideline, which is we want those to be open. We understand that, and this is our dearest wish, that we will connect our product to our control systems. But if you wish to mix and match the best of breed, you have to be able to do it. So we develop that layer on open standards so that you can really choose what you want to use. Second level is edge control because you drive mission critical application. And you don't want your applications to stop if there is a lack of communication or if there is a problem on the cloud. So it's important that this edge control first is able to locally close the loop it's very important that it does it without latency, without losing time, and more important so, because Schneider is a company that believes in people, you want always the local guy to be able to override the system. Third layer, which is a layer of application, analytics, digital services, artificial intelligence. At this level, what we develop has to be agnostic. It has to be able to deal with Schneider systems, on data you acquire with Schneider systems, and with any other kind of system. Because we know that because of history, because you did acquisitions in the past, because you use several different kinds of systems on hardware, on control systems in your installation, you need to aggregate those data, those data across all those origins of system, and you are interested by the performance of your whole company, wherever the systems are coming from. All of this being supported by cyber services and by cloud services that you can get from us end to end, or that you can get from your preferred supplier, and we're gonna interface with it. So that's about the technology. And we've developed six ecostructure, ecostructure power for power management, ecostructure building for building, ecostructure IT for data centers, ecostructure machine for machines, plant for plants, with one discrete architecture, one continuous architecture, and the two merging together for hybrid, and one for grid, okay? And it's been a lot of work to make sure that all of those would be on one platform and not multiple legacy platforms so that when you work at Schneider, when you work as a developer on our platforms, you can really be based on one platform for all your applications. But 
customers rarely come to us for technology. What they want to have is to resolve their problem, to resolve their user's case. So probably enough with technology, what I would like to do here is to come through several cases of application that illustrate what people do with the digital architecture. So first case, um, and we are in Hong Kong, which Rerina rightly so called vertical city because all the, of the beautiful buildings that we have here. So buildings represent 30 to 40 percent of the world energy consumption. Um, I would like, rather than talking about theory of building, come back on one example, which is uh, the example of a building that we have in Europe. You have to ask yourself when you design building, if you look 10 years from now, which building will not be net positive? Which building will be still taking a lot of energy from the grid? Many people will be working to make sure that buildings get energy positive. Let's take one example, which is the example of Deloitte. Uh, they created their new building in, uh, in Amsterdam. So it's 40,000 square meters of offices. As every business, they compete for talent and they wanted the best environment for their people to work on. They wanted to be attractive and, and to, to offer the best working place for millennials particularly. The average consumption of a building in Europe is 200 to 400 kilowatt hour per square meter per year. The edge is zero. It's net positive, 0 0.3. And I could go on and on, and this building is at the highest rating of BREEAM. Uh, it's just a smart building that we have developed with Deloitte with the, and, and our partners with the three layers of ecostructure. And rather than talking instead of the customer, I, I propose that we hear the customer. It's called the edge because we're on the edge of technology. The building is the most sustainable office building in the world. Schneider is the single backbone to connect everything. But it's not just sustainable, but it's also extremely comfortable to be the best workplace for our people. Very good pace. Uh, Schneider Electric being a single integrator for us, it worked extremely well. That was a short one. Well, you can't rest there, right? <laughs> Next example, 30% of the world uh, consumption which is coming from industry. And the world is becoming more and more industrial. It's going more and more digitized. If uh, when you live in Asia, you have China, which is pushing manufacturing in China, 2025, country like India, which is pushing the agenda of made in India and digital India, combine the two together, everything is going to the direction of a digitized industrialization. Just no video, just would like to share with you uh, one example uh, where we worked with Baogang, uh, which is one of the most, the biggest actually, iron and steel company in, uh, in, uh, in China. And we work with them to realize the first unmanned rolling workshop in Baogang, gaining in that 30% in improvement of productivity, all leveraging the strengths of the plug and play uh, architecture from connected products to software. Going into the grid, there is one stakeholder here in the whole world of the new energy which has a very difficult job. And these are the utilities on the grid operators. Uh, integrate that not only the, their job is awfully regulated because everybody has an opinion on the grid. But on the top of it, uh, there is the explosion of those new cases, modulated consumption, scattered, renewable, volatile generation on consumers who are more and more measuring what's coming on them, and they are still the orchestrator. And if there is the slightest issue on the grid, it becomes a big noise on the market. So grid operators on utilities have been really proactive in taking care of digitization. Because for the first time in the world of electricity, grids are connected from power plant to the plug. And that makes it possible to imagine a new world of energy where it's not like you have to generate for the maximum peak of consumption, but you can incite your consumers 
to consume more when energy is cheap on green. Um, there are again no, no video, but I'd like to share uh, the example of South Australia Power Network, which is part of Power Assets in, uh, in, uh, in Hong Kong. Um, and they are with us today, and thank you for that. Where they have to manage a grid which is operated in difficult conditions because you know the outback of Australia, it's very wide, it's very large, uh, and, and they have to put together all the equation of energy in a country which is adopting quite fast solar energy on, on renewables. Again, we work closely with them to make it digital and connect everything from the power plant to the, to the plug. Digitization. Asia is more than 50% of the world population. And traveling all over the world, I think, I know, and many of you know, that it's probably the most digital part of the world. Asia in many countries has not gone through the step of the landline, it has gone straight to mobile on pervasive mobility. And with that data is coming on accumulating on each data center has to accommodate with what we call the data tsunami or the data deluge, which is this multiplication of data uh, which is proliferating today. And there again, with the huge necessity of continuity of service, because I don't know about your kids, but if my kids lose the connection, it's riot at home. We have become data addicted. So people who have to manage data centers have to manage not only that flow of data and data real time. Here you've got the, uh, the example of animal logic and I won't speak about them because they will be on stage later this afternoon. Those guys are a privileged part of Hollywood doing those animated cartoons, right? It's the one that uh, our kids want to go and see but we prefer to go because we like to go with the kids, they're funny. But, but making sure that they can deal with the data at the right speed and, and uh, accommodate them and deal with them on the data center. Data center is a very demanding application. It's also the biggest energy density among all the applications that Schneider deals with. And the key value here is reliability and continuity of service. So making sure that there is no power outage. So cut a, a long story short, eco structure, is the integration architecture of Schneider that we put at your disposal to enable your digital transformation in power management and in automation. It makes it possible to build complete solution for your business, combining six domains, and it's based on openness so that we can work together on the design of those solutions. So now there is one thing also that we should, uh, there are four uh, uh, messages that I would like to integrate as we speak about digitization. I don't think it changes fundamentally the mission we have with our customers. Our priority is still to deliver you safe, reliable, efficient, sustainable, and connected technology. That's what we used to do, and that's what we keep doing. But it raises the level of capabilities to a new level. And particularly, it makes it possible to manage from one site into multi-site. So where you are managing your energy on one side, you can aggregate multiple sites to find the best solution, the best supplier for what you do. Because you get access to all the details of what is happening in your installation, you can go from curative maintenance to predictive maintenance and prevent the outages. You can plan and schedule in between sites because you got real-time data exchange in between those sites. So to summarize, it brings management to a new level. It augments the capacity for CXOs to manage better their companies. It augments also the capabilities of the operators in at least two ways. In our business, it's still very difficult to find the right talents for high competency on high capability on high expertise. If your sites are connected, you can gather your competencies into one site so that they can come in reinforcement on your on, of your on-site teams. It also makes it possible to give your operators, because things are digitized, 
augmented reality tools that will help them accomplish their work more efficiently and more so increase their safety. I don't know about you, but my first priority as a CEO is to make sure that all the Schneider people on our customers are operating safely. And if an operator in front of a machine or installation is given the right sequence of instruction, this is many more reasons why no accident uh, will happen. And finally, it augments the assets of, uh, of, uh, that, we are, that we have on any installation. By going to predictive, you increase the life of the asset in a quite important manner. Second point I'd like to, um, um, uh, us to integrate is that there is a lot of buzz around the Internet of Things. You are closer than you think from the benefits of the Internet of Things. For, there are plenty of people who say the Internet of Things is completely different. You have to re-instrument everything, and put sensors everything, and, and, and rework on your installation everywhere. The reality is that in your present installations, there are plenty of products which are installed, which are capable of communication, and which own most of the critical data, and which are not connected. Already by connecting them, which is virtually at no cost, you get a wealth of information. Second point is that many of you have already connected their installation on-premise a long time ago. You have BMS operating in smart buildings. You have automated machines, of course, and automated manufacturing. SCADAs operating all over the world. If you connect the connected, then you bring your data, you aggregate it on a cloud that can be your private cloud, that can be a public cloud, that can be a cloud that we can build for you. Then you get access to all that new layer of augmented management, augmented operator, and augmented assets. Asset management, total energy management, augmented operator, planning, scheduling, benchmarking on MES, supply and selection. We observe our automation system we think that only 5% of the data is today used. 95% is what IT people call dark data. If we can extract that and work on it, on compute on it, that a lot of the IoT capabilities that we unlock and which is available here are very close to what you already have. No need to reinstrument everything. Third point is that digital is a perfect place for collaboration. When things go digital, they become accessible to a whole ecosystem of partners. So already when we develop our systems, I've got a very simple principle at Schneider. Let's not redevelop what other guys are developing. So we have systematically developed our systems with technology providers on adopting also systematically open standards so that we can really make it possible to mix and match systems. But more so, we have a tradition at Schneider, which is to do the largest part of our business with partners, developers, integrators. Ecostructure is an architecture. It is a platform. It goes with a shared, deep knowledge of segments, of verticals, of industries. It goes with a portfolio of digital services, software, applications, and it goes already with 22,000 integrators and developers who are signed to the program. And we wish to keep opening so that this is a crossroad of collaboration and innovation so that we help you realize your bold ideas, realize your bold plans for your business and for your future. And the last point I would like to share with you is that we are not speaking about the distant future. We at Schneider have launched EcoStructure 10 years ago. Today it already makes 50% of our business or so, 45%. 45% of what we sell is within the environment of connected products, edge controls, uh, software, and, and analytics and speak about oil and gas, mining metals and minerals, food and beverage, pharmaceutical, water, wastewater, environmental treatment, building, utilities, um, uh, data centers, and machines, 
These are places where we have already significant references together with many of you as partners and integrators. My only wish, because again, it's all about collaboration, is to make sure that we keep exploring the future together, we keep deploying uh, those architectures, and we at Schneider don't want to do everything. We open our system so that you can develop the applications on the analytics which extract the real value from digitization. Make be sure of one thing, is that we are committed to be with you and to do it with you. That concludes my introduction. Have fantastic two days. Uh, take any opportunity to exchange with our teams, and I look forward to meeting some of you later during those meetings. Thank you.